These police are firing rubber bullets at pro-democracy protesters in Myanmar. The protesters are hiding behind homemade shields, as you can see here. In other cities, uh, police are using tear gas on protesters, but that's not stopping the demonstrations, which are taking place after a night of crackdowns. Reuters reports that security forces raided residential areas in Yangon overnight and made several arrests. Now, women in Myanmar are taking active roles in this fight for democracy, proving they are not afraid to face down security forces. Women have a lot to lose if the country is governed by the patriarchal military junta. The New York Times reports that hundreds of thousands of female teachers, garment workers and medical workers are marching every day. Women are also being killed in these protests. One of the most recent was a 19-year-old whose English name was Angel. Women are marching unarmed and unafraid, wearing ball gowns to fight for the future of Myanmar, as you can see from this very powerful image. Well, Mimi Winbird is an adjunct fellow at the East West Center. She joins me now live from Honolulu in Hawaii. Lovely to see you. You are Burmese American and you served as Lieutenant Colonel in the US Army. So why have women in Myanmar become warriors in these protests? Aloha, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, these women are the result of 10 years of uh, democracy and 10 years of opening that they have experienced. Because uh, traditionally, uh, Myanmar women are, have a very stereotyped role in, in, in the culture. And by the last 10 years, they have, their eyes have been opened because the country was open. And uh, a lot of our... Um, our uh, uh, international aid always had a component of uh, women empowerment. So we're seeing the, um, the, the result of it. So not only they, are, they, are, they feel that this, um, the protest and the political arena is re relevant to women, uh, they now also have the, um, the cap capability and ability to participate and lead in this, uh, this protest, which is different from previous protests. What's also interesting is they're unarmed, they're certainly defiant, and also they're using their femininity in many ways to challenge these generals. As I was saying a little bit earlier, one of the powerful images, and there have been so many of these groups of young women coming out in formal dresses in ball gowns, staring down men with guns, they, they are unafraid. Right. Well, they, that is, they are utilizing their femininity to, 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 to the, the, as a strength. And uh, one of some of the women are saying that we, as a mother, future mothers, have the responsibility for the, uh, for, for, for um, the democracy in Myanmar. So they, they are equating motherhood and being a mother as a, a leadership quality. And so that's one of the uh, interesting things that coming out of this. Yeah, it's, it's very inspiring. And of course, it's not just about the future and it's not just about losing hard-won rights, but they've also lost a female leader in many ways in Aung San Suu Kyi. So what else do you think is the end game here? And do, do you think there's a sense of optimism that these women feel like they can stare down the hunter? Well, they are. They are very courageous, they are very committed, and they are very creative as well. And so there are certain uh, uh, part of this protest that is different from previous. So they do things like CDM, right? Um, civil dis disobedience movement, that is something different. Uh, they have, uh, especially the, the, the the teachers, when teachers and professors are leading their students. And uh, when you talk about teachers and professors of the university, 80% are women. So when they are out there leading, there's mostly women. So um, yes, also, of course, Do Aung San Suu Kyi, right? They had a great role model in Do Aung San Suu Kyi, and, and they call her mother. So they now associate being a mother with being a leader. So, uh, and they're very uh, committed to their, their, their cause and they truly believe that they can, they can do this. You mentioned teachers, but there's certainly been a, div a diversity to this protest movement. It's not just teachers, it's doctors, garment workers, a lot of the unions uh, banding together. How important is that? 
It's very important because uh, that's what is going to uh, lead them to success, is that diversity of uh, uh, participation and the, the commitment of this. You know, uh, I would say that Myanmar is currently uh, at the uh, front line of a uh, global fight for democracy. And these women are at this tip of the spear of this fight. Uh, the tip of the spear, I know in the New York Times article, uh, somebody said that women are adding spine to this civil disobedience movement. We're also seeing the youngest of the youngest, one woman in particular whose English name was Angel, uh, killed. She's also, and many of these women are willing to die for this, uh, even though they are not mothers yet. How, how are these martyrs and the martyrdom of these young women also playing into the anger and the defiance? Um, I think that it's added to more commitment. Every time someone is killed, uh, and uh, instead of being afraid, uh, what I'm seeing is they're more committed to the cause. And they, they just don't want to go back to the dark days of you know authoritarianism, uh, military uh, regime before. So they really are very committed to, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, democracy, and they, they, they are willing to fight for it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Mimi Winburn, really appreciate your perspective. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Thank you.